Bad Times at the El Royale came out this past weekend, and I hope you got a chance to see it. I'm um, going to share some insights we got from the cast about the process of making this movie. Uh, then we're going to have a conversation in a minute about how we thought all of the parts of this movie fit together. But first, I want to talk about that opening sequence. So, Bad Times at the El Royale is the latest from Drew Goddard, who did the very cool Cabin in the Woods a few years back. So this one is one that we've been really excited about. And it's got some similar themes dealing with some like behind the curtains, string pullers and that kind of thing. But my biggest takeaway was that it is a lush, very nice to look at movie. There's a thick color palette and this great mid-century design that's just a bit past its prime, but not so out of date that it's cool again, which I think I realized is my favorite design aesthetic. But one of the things I really do love about this movie is its noirish setup, where a handful of strangers uh, with something to hide all meet up at this hotel on the border between California and Nevada, and they get introduced in a really fantastic way. Now part of this is this movie's got a great cast. Jeff Bridges, John Hamm, Cynthia Erivo is great. But the other part of it that I want to talk about for a minute is this introductory scene. The first 20 minutes or so of this movie after the title screen is incredibly well made. There's this really great tradition of these movies too, sort of bottle films, these films that collect characters in one location where they just hash it out. So Agatha Christie is like maybe the classic example of this, right? Murder on the Orient Express and movies like that. Uh, it's a trope in movies that are like spoofs of Agatha Christie's too. Think about Clue or Murder by Death and those kinds of films. But also uh, think about the diner scene at the beginning of Reservoir Dogs. Anytime a movie depends on an ensemble of interesting characters, it really depends on a great sequence to introduce everybody at the top of the film. And Bad Times at the El Royale definitely has one of those. And we got a chance to ask the cast and crew about the process of creating that sequence. Well, the arrival scene took about two weeks to shoot. It's, it was very complicated. It had a lot of people in it. And we were introducing all of these characters sort of piecemeal. They're briefly kind of interacting before then dispersing. So it was very exciting and very challenging, and it was also the first thing we shot. It was unusual uh, for me to come across a scene that is allowed to be that long yeah. and to introduce all the characters. That was unusual right from the top, right. really. That scene's super interesting. It's, it's kind of like a game of chess. Each person is like a chess piece, and they're moving around, and you're playing your position, and you're trying to make sure that each thing comes together to, to create this, like, it's almost like a theater piece, you know? Even though you're not quite sure what's gonna happen, you get yeah. to sort of like have a snapshot of what these people are like. It, it was cool to kind of navigate around the set. Martin, our, the, the uh, production designers, uh, set, we, we were lucky enough to kind of see a model of it right. beforehand because it is very much like theater because we're kind of having to block right. within a pretty small, you know, surface area. Yeah. So. In that sense, that was a cool challenge. It could be like, okay, how are we going to make this area interesting? Because this is what you're looking at for the most of the movie. Right. You give over to the process, and you give over to the thing. You understand that you're in a scene with Jeff Bridges and, and Cynthia Riva and Lewis and these wonderful actors. Dakota comes in very late in that scene. So there's so many moving parts, and it's, it becomes this really cool kind of symphonic thing. And Drew just did a wonderful job directing it. So the opening sequence to Bad Times at the El Royale is really cool, really well made. Now I'm sitting here with Tom. Tom, does the rest of the movie hold up to that great opening sequence? I think it does. I've seen it a couple times at this point, and I am a really big fan of this movie. More so the second after the second time than the first time. I think you sort of notice more. You see sort of what they're setting up, and you can catch some of the plants earlier on, and that's really fun to track through the rest of the movie. The character development, the uh, the arcs that especially uh, Jeff Bridges and Cynthia Revo's characters go through are really fun, and it's just a it's just a fun sort of mysterious movie. I really liked it. One of the things that I liked about the opening sequence is that it was so, uh, everybody's in the same place, it was so straight ahead and, and here's everybody showing up one at a time and then they start doing a bunch of non-linear uh, stuff. So for the rest of the movie we're sort of discovering what these people are up to and what their background is and what secrets they're hiding and all that stuff and the way that they do it is through that non-linear structure. Yeah, those vignettes. Yeah, yeah. And one of the weird things, I, I feel like that took the air out of like the whole movie. By the time we get to the end, like all of the tension is sort of gone and the ending doesn't really land. So I feel like this movie was kind of less than the sum of its parts, right? Like all the characters were cool and really well established but I don't know, it just didn't add up to as much for me. Yeah, and that's the funny thing is that you and I have kind of come to, the, I think, this understanding that you think it's less than, <laughs> some of it, less than the sum of its parts. I kind of think it's more than the sum of its parts. I wasn't so bothered by the nonlinear sort of the vignettes, the structure. I was really just engrossed by the characters. I think that 
uh, for a movie that is so much about uh, like redemption and sort of uh, bettering yourself or b being better than who you used to be, uh, especially in Jeff Bridges' character, Father uh, Daniel Flynn or whatever his real name, Doc. Right. Uh, his arc from going from this sort of criminal to, you know, very funnily uh, sort of represented by his priest getup, we learn very, we learn in the trailer that he's not really a priest. I really enjoyed uh, especially his arc and also seeing Darlene really sort of take this, uh, this stance of power and, and I've had enough. That is kind of her uh, refrain throughout the movie. It's a little song joke for you because she sings the whole time. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I really nice. enjoyed that. Yeah, I think all of those characters, I could have done with a Darlene Sweet movie from start to finish. Or, or, and Father Daniel Flynn had a really interesting story. And all of these characters, it felt like they could have had their own movie. And the movies, mm. Two and a half hours long, so it is they long. practically did have their own movies sort of tied in there. And by the time they all came together at the end, it wasn't in like a satisfying way for me. So I feel it felt like spare parts from other movies. I will say this: that as as much as the, while the vignette sort of structure, the the nonlinear stuff didn't bother me too much. I will say this: yes, it is long, and it could stand to lose maybe ten or fifteen minutes somewhere. It took in there. a while to end. It did. It, do, it really did. It's, it's kind like of a not, Return of the King situation. Not, well, I was going to say, bad. not Return of the King a while, but it took a while. Yeah, I would say maybe as much as I love John Hamm as an actor, I do think if you were to lose sort of anybody's sort of presence in the story, you lose the least by taking out John Hamm's. And obviously, just like most of the characters in Bad Times, everyone's kind of got a little secret to hide, as does he. I think his secret is probably the most superfluous to everything else going on. Well, and possibly the biggest secret of the whole movie is what's going on with this hotel. Like, who yeah. is management? Who's yeah. behind? Who's pulling the strings? That's and with that's, all those creepy video And that's a secret that, that just doesn't even, nobody even really bothers to try to figure that it's out. very and quickly abandoned. Yeah, it, on, on one hand, there's so much backstory built into these characters, and on the other hand, like, something very central to the movie isn't really explored at all, and so I, I felt, it, it just felt really uneasy. Yeah, I, I, I would be willing to accept that, that it does sort of set up things and doesn't really pay them off. It does quickly become much more interested, like I've said, in character and sort of uh, these arcs that these characters have. But I, that was enough for me, and the characters ended up being so interesting, and the drama and the interplay was so, these are such good actors. This is really an actor's showcase of a movie. Okay, so that's what we think of the movie. Uh, you know, I tend to think it was a little, didn't quite come together. I kind of think it did come you together. You think it did? Let us know if you're excited about seeing the movie in the comments down below. And as always, click like and subscribe to Cinefix for more movie stuff. We'll see you next time.